Hello everyone and welcome back to another hero battle video. My name is Jeff Hoagland and I'm joined by fellow hex hero Kent Ketter. We are bringing you today uh, again one of the uh, tier 1 decks in the format. Kent's going to be playing the uh, mono sapphire uzu empress deck and on my side of the board I'm going to be playing a uh, blood splashing sapphire uzu control deck that uh, I've been enjoying playing with on stream. Uh, my opening 7 here is pretty reasonable. It's a little bit slow, but I think this is acceptable on the play. On the draw, I might think twice about this, but having Hero Fall in the opener is a pretty big game in this matchup. Uh, on my side of the board, I'm piloting the Platinum Plunder Top 8 winning list, uh, piloted by Justice. Uh, this opener, not the most powerful one, but it's definitely one that we're going to hold on to. We, we wish we had maybe a Tribunal Magistrate or an Empress of Ice, but we have a removal spell for the first uh, threat of our opponent, be it a vampire, a prince, or a bride. And we have a copycat, so if we find those threats, we'll be in good shape. Start off here on Blood Shard and pass the turn. The old conundrum of... I never play, play the point here, one? ever. No. I will, if I only have three shards, um, and I have a two, I'll run it out on the one sometimes. Oh, or so I'll I'm run greedy. it out on the one. I, I'm greedy and I don't even play it then. Like, so that's one of the big things about, like, these Uzu decks, especially, like, the Empress Uzu deck, is that, like, because your champion power doesn't effectively generate you, like, card advantage like a lot of the champions do, like, having an extra shard and, like, having it only be a resource if you draw even one or two more shards is a huge drawback. Alright. Right. Right. Two drops there. I'm just going to go ahead and stick my Vampire Princess here. If we're able to keep a threat in play while we're one for one in Keter, we are much better off than otherwise. So, my options here are to Transmogrifade, Empress, or Tribunal Magistrate. Um... I think... I can, I think I can roll the dice on maybe not getting Vampire Princess. Nah, that just feels overly cute. Um, the, the, the real question here is, uh, do we use this Transmogrifate on the Princess or do we try to hold it up for the incoming Bride plus two minus one minus one triggers? Oh. Yep. Uh, um, yeah, we're going to try to do that. Actually, no, there's no reason to play the coin yet. There is not. We don't care. So we're going to play the, the regular Sapphire Shard and pass the turn over. Uh, this is still trying to conserve the, the coin activation as opposed to trying to play it as a shard. Even if we played it tap next turn as a slow shard, that's fine with the progression of Copycat and one of our three drops. Just going to crack my Vampire Princess in here, see what, see what shakes <laughs> out. I'm just gonna take this hit. I understand I can lose the, hey, but I'm not too afraid of the one and six. I'm just gonna pass the turn here. I could Blood's Favor to try and draw some cards. Like I'm already hitting my resource drop this turn. I'd much rather hold up Hero Fall on what's kind of their critical first copycat turn. I'm gonna hold off on the Transmogrifade here. So my option is Magistrate or Empress. The expectation is the opponent has Hero Fall. Hmm. Unfortunately, there's not like a there's a not not a great way to play around the Hero Fall here. Uh, if we Empress, opponent will get to untap and probably pretty easily hit one of the two spells in our hand, which is not. Not too exciting, if you ask me. Uh, we'll focus here. Attempt to find another shard. I'm just not really interested in extending one of my threats into my opponent's uh, hero fall. I'm even willing to, you know, take a turn off to try to set up something on a later turn. So it powerful. feels like if I made the death crawler bigger. Oh yeah, I, I like. It just feels like if I commit the uh, tribunal magistrate here, we just lose that game pretty easily, getting two for one. Oof. Stupid princess clocking Pressure. the whole way. Pressure here again with the princess. Uh, 
Take another round of damage. Hey. Ketter is a gambling man. Um, I'm going to go ahead and Blood's Favor here, draw two, lose two. Uh, because we picked up the piece of two cost interaction, we have a pretty good chance of getting a non slow resource here and still being able to hold up stuff for copycat. He says as he draws two slow shards. All right, well, we'll play the coin out here and then pass the turn. Unfortunately, our, our shields are kind of down right now. Like, Ketter gets a turn to get a copycat in here if he wants it on something. <clears throat> that is absolutely opportunity we're going to take here. Oh, the real question, though, is how badly do we want to get... All right, well, we'll just... We're, we're going to start the parade here. Yep. Hopefully there's only one cat in my future. Wish I had like seven cats. It's the part where I cheap shot you in response and you cry. Acceptable losses. There's hard no, hard no cheap shots here. That was a cheap shot. No, no, it wasn't cheap. It was it was actually a, a high value. It's kind of an expensive shot. In fact, so yeah. I'm gonna lead on a hero fall here. <gasps> Just get this out of the way now, because any any I mean, you saw both those light up when I played the hero fall. He put four eggs into my deck, which is not ideal. So we want to minimize the impact of that. I really dislike doing this, but I don't feel like Jeff has presented a bride. So we're actually going to transmogrify the tribunal magistrate. Uh, I can't give up the level of blowout that would have been experienced by that. We got, got a tribunal magistrate or two. We know you have at least one, right? Well, I guess we don't know that. We saw one. So you could potentially have more. We're assuming Ketter has more based on the line that he just took. Yeah. Hey, look at that. Surprise. Uh, yeah, I think we're just going to go ahead and pass here. All right. This is a lesson, folks. Right now. Don't gonna pick this to be magistrate. The Pick correct one. one. Right click. Um, yep. Size it up. Let me make sure. Now let me, let me I'm gonna go on the other one. Just double checking. Yeah, the other one has that copycat image. Right click your magistrates, folks. Right click your magistrates. So I could strangle this copycat in response here, but mm -hmm. because I have this Rylanth in my hand, I think we're gonna try and roll the dice on hitting a non-slow shard next turn so we can just like Wrath Kitter's board at the cost of putting some eggs in our deck. Take another two here. This vampire princess is doing a good job of keeping those at bay. Uh, if we miss on the shard, we probably actually have to kill the shard sword. And we missed on the resource. Because um, the shard sword can make dreadlings, which are currently huge slash huge. Um, They're not small. Each so magistrate's think... pumping for four. We're going to lead on Hero Fall here again, making sure that I Hero Fall the original Tribunal Magistrate, so that way he can't copycat these other two. He's still got one out of the hand. Seems decent. Um, I'm going to start by attacking with the Princess in case we had an action out of Ket's hand. We can use that to then kill the Shard Sworn. Commander prompt. That's gross. Um, hmm. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and transmog this shard sworn as opposed to strangling it, because again, if we hit um, a non-slow shard next year, we can then rile with plus strangle to clean up everything Kedar has going on. We know he has a commander prompt now, which is kind of scary. Yep. And triggers the warp steel widget. This gets a counter every time an artifact enters play. They can turn it into a random trade hit for. Three seven here down to fifteen. Oh, well, it's like I'm playing a a, a plunder or clash uh, event, and I'm not clicking through my combat correctly. Oh well. You always use your attack with all hockey folks. Oh yeah. All right, and we got rewarded for having having waited here, so we get to go ahead and attack with this princess. And then these decks randomly have like denies and other stuff like that, main. So I'm just going to be conservative here and rile and strangle right now. Not giving him a chance to. chance to do anything. So Ryland soul curses all of my, all of Kent's troops, and then when one soul curse troop dies, they all die. So Kent's whole board is going to bite it here. Um, that being said, worth noting that I'm down to 66. I'm up, up to, sorry, 66 cards in my deck because there are a bunch of spider eggs from these magistrates. So hopefully we can kill Kent before, before that gets out of hand. 
Unfortunately, uh, we have to select an Empress here that lines us up to get Hero Fall, but uh, the other card... Hero Falls, right? Yeah. Right. Um, it's just one of the things you should always be, like every single turn against the Hero Fall deck. How can I not get two for one with a Hero Fall? Yep. Just repeat that over and over again. Uh, the other option with a Transmogrify, like, I'm not really looking to transmogrify either of these versus just having more threats. Also, Jeff showed me one of his one of his sweepers already. We're gonna play the landing pause site here, and I think just past the turn. Yep, Empress is kind of annoying here. Uh, hopefully, we can find a bride by the time we start finding some spiders. I'm just gonna go ahead and pick this up. I think that's one of his better cards at this point in the game. Like his magistrates are gone, so it's like this and commander prompter is only payoffs at this point. So I'm just gonna save myself the points of damage here and grab that. Reasonable. I'll play this and draw a card. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, Alright. Um, well, I'm gonna start generating some sapphire here. <laughs> At some point, we are gonna lock you out too, sir. Uh huh. Right. Oh, right. No coming back. I've got a sapphire shard in my hand. Thank you very much. Only really one away. That's really good. Uh, we might just be dead here, huh? Yep. Um, Need to hit a so removal spell for this commander prompt. I don't think Warp Steel Widget has a particularly spicy one on two. No, not really. Well, let's like, figure it out. It's probably though. better than not doing anything. Hey, look is at that, that! Is that good? I can't tell. <laughs> be nice if it wasn't exhausted. Yeah, I know. You're so unlucky. I know. All right, so now let's draw a bride that draws a card and hits us a removal spell. Yep. Uh, the reason to swing with the Empress there is even if Jeff does have the strangle to blow it up, uh, we'll have lethal next turn without Jeff being able to untap and is way off of Empress activating. Why'd you put Empress in your deck? That seems kind of silly. I know. So, so bad. Oh, there's that strangle. Um. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and play this out. Oh my god. Oh, I punted huge here, actually. What? Um, I could have exhausted your prompt and then strangled the prompt. Ooh. Yeah, and then that, that. would have been yep. one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm still not dead here. I have a piece of, I have a transmography here in my hand, but like, that was definitely a mistake. I should have killed the commander prompt and then transmography your Empress of Ice. For sure, for sure. We're just gonna draw all the cards here. Yep. So if I hit a Sapphire resource next turn, it's actually not even that bad because then we get to lock Ketter's troops out from attacking. So we take four here, so we are dead on board. Nope, we're not, because we're gonna get to ready and attack with this vampire princess. That sounds great. Maybe I was supposed to put more pressure in there and then just take, so that's an extra th two, push it to three. No. Yep, well, we hit the sapphire. <laughs> Clearly, we need to build a Bride Empress deck. And then Get we out. broke it. We put the two best cards in the same deck. We could just never lose. And then Ketter's dead in two here. Well, that's not how I was expecting this game to go. Well, when you consult for three shards. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, look at that. The fairest consult the talents ever. This is delicious. Still dead on board. Oh. <laughs> oh! Excuse me? Oh, Excuse that's, me? that's so awkward. Gosh, that's awkward. Oh, and I transmogged you into a vetted for the... That's so funny. I had one in here. Yeah, sure you did. <laughs> well, that I mean, considering the first consult was a brick, the second one has to hit, right? All right let's exhaust that. Go, I guess. What an awkward game. <laughs> 
I saw the copycat, I was like, I don't think I care about that. Hmm. Alright, well, I mean, you know. Hashtag all the seven cost consult talents. Ah, that's what I like. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, well, he's adorable. He's gonna attack for one. Last. Um, well, let's just get this out of the way now so you can't draw any Trixies. Uh, am I supposed to exhaust one of your things here? That doesn't seem particularly good. I'm just going to hold it in case we draw a bride. Well, if this warp steel double hits. Oh, so or if I this warp steel hits. The, the warp play around warp steel. Yep. Yeah, because that's four damage. Hey! Okay, so if I play around that, who do we give the win to for this one? Because I fucked up at least twice. Well, I mean, I had the, uh... No, well, also remember I, I missed the two points of damage um, with the not oh, you using did, my... You did, uh, miss, you did miss a two ball, didn't you? Okay, yep, yep. that's a good hit. Yep. I do have four shards in my hand. I, <laughs> I feel like, uh... I, I mean, to be, like... to be fair, I've played 12 shards out this game, so we've both played a similar amount. I have I have 13, yeah, that's for sure. I cast all the draw threes. Seven yep. mana draw threes, specifically. Yeah, Hold on. Yeah. A function. What a close, weird game. All right, well, at any rate, Empress looks like they take the first one. There are a little, couple, couple miscalculations on both sides for sure. But uh, Go, yeah. go, consult. All right, uh, join us for the second game here. Thanks for watching, folks. All right, back for the second free board game here. We're playing some Blood Sapphire Control. I have a pretty, pretty reasonable open here. Powerful top end, piece of removal, Vampire Princess. Send me up. Uh, on my side, I actually have a pretty pretty clunky hand that's really susceptible to hero fall. So we're going to throw this one back. Um, that's more because of the lack of a third shard and the plethora of four drops than, you know, knowing that our opponent's on a hero fall deck. Wow, it's like one of the commanders just wanted to chill. Hang out. What did you do? Okay, into my coin here. This deck um, is pretty resource hungry, usually not cycling coins until you're seven or eight resources deep at least. I'm going to play the slow shard here. We've got our later progression, so we're not looking for anything too specific. Uh, it'd be nice to draw maybe a two drop. But I would like to iterate something because I've seen people do this wrong in this deck. Never gain a charge with Primal Prism unless you have Ascended. So, like, if you're, if you're still in the early game like this, gaining a charge effectively gives you a quarter of a threshold, whereas you could just get an entire threshold from the Primal Prism. Missed on the two, focused, found uh, another threat, and we'll just wait to next turn. Again, I want to go ahead and play my prince princess out here kind of aggressively so we can start pressuring Kent while we're killing his things, hopefully. On our side, we have a, a pretty easy turn three play. Magistrate will crack no matter what Jeff chooses to kill it with next turn, and we're not going to get punished by hero fall, so gimme. Huh. And if you get to untap... Start by attacking with this Vampire Princess, see what we get. Does it give us a little bit of information on how we want to sequence by letting us know a card that's in Kent's hand or possibly taking something? Copycat. So the fact there's a copycat there kind of makes me want to wait on this uh, Hero Fall, so I think I'm just going to go ahead and do that. I'm just going to pass the turn here. We get Hero Fall, whatever Ketter tries to copycat. Which he might not even play the copycat out, since he knows it's like basically passing with removal up. Uh, so, I absolutely have an opportunity to run out a copycat here. The downside is, is if I run it out, um, Jeff will be able to pretty easily line that up with some, uh, super awesome things like Hero, Hero Fall? Or even Rockcaster Strangle, right? Just, like, killing the thing. Right. Like, so we're just gonna hold off a turn. 
Yeah. And I'm gonna go ahead and kill this Empress, that way I can continue hopefully trying to take cards out of Kent's hand, or at least gaining some amount of information here. Also, just not having to deal with Empress for the rest of the game is generally pretty good for us. Like, our deck, we're a control deck, but, like, our deck wins by attacking with troops, so... Fire this off here. So, hey, get out of here. Block this, nerd. Alright, I'm just gonna go ahead and play my Bright out here, because I don't really have anything better to do with my resources at this point. Um, play my resource, give this minus one, minus one, but I'm not gonna play anything else. Activate my champion power, because there's no reason just reducing it to a third defense. Kit Kat, sure. Yep, don't have a piece of removal in response, unfortunately. Yep. It's pretty good. Hopefully there's not a transmography in my future. So, we do the transmogrifade. Uh, I think it's pretty appropriate to fire it off here. The problem is if we try to wait to Jeff's turn, he then responds with... Uh, get another trigger off playing a resource, or I yeah. can draw a piece of removal. There's... Like It's pretty obvious I don't have removal here because I would have killed Ketter. So, take magistrate. advantage of it. Just yep. throw it out there. Sure. I mean, that's that's not the worst, but I'm hoping to kill you before that... <laughs> before that one becomes relevant. Hmm. Well, we drew the removal spell, so we would have been able to punish Kent had he waited. Um, definitely playing a resource out here. I'm going to go ahead and gain my second Sapphire now, just in case we need the Psychic Ascension down the line. I have a choice here between... All of my choices are kind of decent, actually. Uh, so this Skittering Cultivator is going to ready next turn to make two Dreadlings. And then those Dreadlings are going to be... Kent's got three, three Venom, and they so they're going to be seven power. And, like, let's say he has a commander prompt or draws another Tribunal Magistrate. If he draws another Tribunal Magistrate, that's, like, the worst-case scenario, right? Then they would be, um... Fours, twelves, thirteens? They'd be thirteens, and I can chump on. So I'm not dead either way, so I think I'm just going to play the Rylanth out here, honestly. Just, like, get that in. That way our removal spell is going to clean up Kent's board. We're going to take a hit from this Skittering Cultivator, but I think that's fine. Well, if we hit on this, this is the game, I believe. Hey! Jeff might have a Transmogrifade here to help check that. No. Not much we can do. Not. So, yeah, Ketter... So, what, what, when we talk about hit in these first two games, what we mean is when the Depth Crawler, Depth Crawler gets generated, it is a random chance whether or not it's... Which Sapphire gem it's going to in have? In this, it's 50-50. Make in sure it's 50 Correct. Make yeah, it so he has he has a coin flips chance to get the dreadlings gem in it, which allows him to generate these. And then I can only block two of these here, so and three are enough to be lethal. I could have held up the hero fall here to like kill the tribunal magistrate, but like I said, Ketter has to like win a coin flip here for this to this to work out for him. So and he has to have the depth crawler. So I think my percentage play is correct, but I could I could be incorrect there. It's, I, I don't know. No, I think the percentage play is correct to just could, do that. I mean, it's not like you're board. lining up for Ryan Lift plus removal spell next turn. Correct. Yeah, like my removal yeah. spell is hero falls. Like I'm gonna need to draw something down the line. So uh, at any rate, well that's two for the Empress deck. So uh, wow. I guess <laughs> we will move on to some post reserve games. Thanks for watching, folks. Hello everyone, this is Kent Ketter with a Hero Battles Reserving video for the Empress side of this matchup. So for those uh, wanting to kind of, you know, get up to speed on how we're going to approach our Empress deck versus Jeff's control deck, uh, this is the place to take a look. So one thing that's unique about Jeff's strategy is he has Bride of the Damned, uh, that being something that makes all of our opponent's removal spells then turn our threats into their threats. We do have to bring in the fourth Transmogrifate. 
So we'll slot that into the deck. Uh, something against all the Hero Fall decks that you're going to deal with, you want the super awesome Arcane Zephyr. So what Zephyr is going to let you do is on that really critical turn four, when you play your three drop threats, be it the Magistrate or the Empress of Ice, and then you attempt to copy Tat, you'll be able to Arcane Zephyr to protect against the removal spell. It's a really large tempo swing, and it really helps try to uh, you know stick the threats that help close the game for you. A couple, or excuse me, Another card that we're gonna access is the Psychic Ascension. This does a great job as the game stretches out and you know we're casting Transmogrifades, Arcane Focuses and Consult the Talents. It gives us an alternative win condition that ignores all the removal that our opponent is bringing to the table. And in this case, it's 12 to 13 removal spells at a minimum. Uh, last threat we'll grab is a Mad Robomancer. Uh, so for those not up to speed on this one, uh, Robomancer will replicate itself when we play in action. The gemming that I recommend in this case, or the, the socketing, we're going to go with the minor sapphire of dread and we're going to go with a minor a major sapphire of sorcery now the reason we can select that sapphire of dread is one of the first cards that we're going to cut is this warp steel shard sworn so i'm actually going to switch over to the view here a little bit easier to see this excuse me sort that by cost for you all right um from there we are going to be cutting since it's a hero fall deck we're going to go with a one 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 split there. Uh, additionally, the copycat is going to come out. Now, the reasoning behind the copycat is an expectation that the opponent is going to stay on top of the explosive sequence by keeping up a removal spell. So copycat, in those cases, you can't just run it out there. It'll it'll be a negative impact. Uh, additionally, if Jeff has to cheap shot, oh, just get out of here. So we're going to cut one of those. We have one additional card to cut. Now, this is probably the most difficult decision you have to make is the final card that you're going to be accessing. Uh, I think you're going to want to access this commander prompt and get that removed from the deck. You could also look at the Warp Steel Shard Sworn, the second copy out of the deck. Warp Steel is particularly bad against Bride, but I'm going to cut the additional prompt there. It doesn't really protect against removal spells outside of Strangle. It's also quite expensive being on the four spot, not that interested in the card. So. This is the configuration that I'd like to present against Hero Fall decks post board. We've got Zephyr, we've got Psychic Ascension, and we brought in, uh, well, from there, we actually took cards out to just get us to threes and two odds to help us against the Hero Fall decks. This was Kent Ketter with a reserving video for a hero battle. Check you out in the other videos. Thanks. Hello, everyone, and welcome to my reserving segment for today's uh, hero battle video. So we're playing the Blood Sapphire control side against the... Uh, Mono Sapphire Empress deck. Uh, the first thing we want to bring in are these copies of Cheap Shot and Misery. Uh, Misery is aptly named for our opponent in this matchup. Uh, this card is very flexible. Not only can it do things like uh, clean up Warp Steel Shard Swarms, but it can also kill all of Kent's Dreadlings when he's attacking on a big turn and for only a single resource, so it allows us to like, generate some tempo swings. You can also play Misery in response to copycat targeting things, being able to kill it before it becomes the scary thing that Ketter wants to copy. Um, the last card I'm going to bring in out of the reserves here is this copy of Dread End. This is kind of just like a, our board clear, like Extinction doesn't exist in Standard right now, so it can kind of clean up the board. Uh, we have to be a little aggressive when we use this, because if our life total gets too low and Ketter turns into too many Dreadlings, he's going to be able to kill us with them, but I think this card's fine to play on turn 5 or turn 6 a lot of the time, especially if we have a copy of Misery to hold up with it. Um, things we're cutting in this matchup is I want to kind of bring our curve down a little bit while also cutting some of the other cards that are just less than ideal. First thing out is this Tomb Swap. Uh, Ketter's not actually killing a lot of our threats. He's usually just like keeping them locked down or transmogrifating them. So this Tomb Swap's really here for other blood-based removal decks. The next card I'm going to cut is one of the copies of Something Borrowed along with the Vampire Queen and then these two copies of Lanny Paws Sight. So these cards are kind of slow and clunky and they don't interact with the board, so it's kind of a liability to be uh, keeping too many cards like Lanny Paws Sight in. We have six cards in our main deck with those Lanny Paws Sights that just draw cards on three, and I think cutting back to just four of those is more than reasonable in this matchup. One swap I'm not 100% sure on is this Vampire Queen might be marginally better than this Psychic Ascension. Uh, I like that Psychic Ascension really lets us go over the top. Sometimes these Empress decks board up a little bit into their own Ascension, so I'd like to be able to compete with that. But I could see Vampire Queen just being more appropriate um, as a top-end finisher along with the Ryland, just because this card can buffer our life total addition to impacting the board. But I'm going to go with the Psychic Ascension here, but I'm willing to accept that that might not be correct. At uh, any rate, uh, stay tuned for the matches here along with the wrap-up section. Thanks for watching, folks. 
Alright, so we're back for our first post reserves game here. Hopefully we're gonna get on the scoreboard here in our good matchup. Um, <laughs> our, we have a reserve strategy that's set up to make Keter thoroughly miserable. Um, we uh, are gonna replace that first hand that doesn't have, have many blood thresholds in it. With this one, like a little medium minus, you need to draw a third, a third resource with blood's favor, but plenty of spot removal, which is good. On our side, we have uh, a keep. We have shards and uh, some troops. Hmm. Gotta ask the tough question. Resource, which is excellent. Or two. Since Jeff has presented the ability to play Strangle, it's not like the Skittering Cultivator is better than the Warp Steel. You should um, almost certainly play the Warp Steel on two, I think. Yep. Yep. If uh, Jeff had played uh, Sapphire Blood for his thresholds, you can try to uh, play the Skittering to make him have to kill it on the untap. Right? Just yeah. Go ahead and Ooh. Unmulligan ourselves here, draw a couple cards, lose a couple life. Pass the turn back to Kent. That's a pretty good pickup. I'm just gonna hopefully get some people got here. Our side, we have a pretty standard draw with another two drop here. I'd be concerned if you had an immortal draw since we're playing standard tonight. Yeah, uh, right. Interesting. So. I have a chance that we can, I can just run out the Empress here, um, or the, the Skittering Cultivator. I actually think I'm going to hold the Cultivator for the turn. Uh, no, that's not right. We'll play Cultivator pre-combat. Don't consult me, bro. Don't do it. No, Empire. unfortunately, we don't have that juice. That would have been... God bless. Those are the, like, the terrifying turn threes. We're just like, all right, second two drop, draw three cards. And... Yeah, take two damage or fall behind by two cards. Hmm. Tough choice. So so I'm going to hold on to this for now, since we have this in our hand. I'm just going to go ahead and pass back to Kent here. All right, we're going to focus first. There we go. Put the Skittering Cultivator out here, and now we can just slow down our progression by one turn with the uh, access to some of these quick actions in the reserves. Excited to see where this kind of ends up. All right. So I'm not going to get too greedy here. We can get the. I think we just take the. Three, I think we just take the three for one on the straight end and call it a day. We can't, we don't have a ton of ways to gain life in the mid to late game, so we need to be kind of conservative of like how much we're using our life total as a resource here. So I think we just want to go ahead and fire this off. We're going to take four damage from it. If he like plays a magistrate next turn, I guess like if he goes magistrate copycat, we could actually die here, but I think this is worth the gamble. We do not have that, the, uh, the magistrate. God bless. Many cats of the copying variety. Yep. Kit Kat, come back now. Yep. So we're gonna hold on to the coin here, you know, one because of its application as a cantrip, but also to be able to exhaust one of our opponent's troops if necessary. Hopefully we draw a resource here so we can play the site plus hold up a piece of spot removal. We did not. However, I don't think I want to play that as it's just yet. I'm gonna go ahead and play the Lanipois site here. I'm gonna play this Vampire Prince as a follow-up, I think. All of these things are allowed to happen. Hmm. We're going to keep it pretty simple here, run out another Empress to try to make us a little more resistant to Hero Fall, play the coin as much as we'd like to, you know, save that. Ah, oh, I messed up! Darn Click it! Click efficiency was Click lost, Click efficiency! Yeah. No! You to make your threshold before you play the third Empress, that way you have to click one less trigger. 
we're, we're it's getting a, it's you a little thing the text. My, when I only have one target, automatically make all of his triggers target my thing. Oh man, got to get the important stuff right, Jeff. Yeah. Click efficiency, man. It's all about all about the click efficiency. Hey, when you lose that game to your clock, you'll you'll remember click efficiency. Speaking of click efficiency, you should check out our streams. What? Right. That'd be a terrible second. We'll lead on this, drawing a card here. Transmog's a decent hit. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and play Rylanth out here and Soul Curse all of these nerds. And then I think we're just going to go ahead and pass. Mm. Well. Focus. Okay, there's looking for a resource here. Nice. I feel pretty comfortable here. Not perfect by any means, but we're doing all right. Make sure that pesky, that pesky dragon. Yep. All right, so Jeff is gonna have to somehow have Trip's removal spell. I don't like the sound of that. Okay, uh, yeah, I think we're just dead here. I guess, I guess we can lead on this and see what we get, so it draws a card. Uh, so we allow this to happen, we're not concerned at all about, uh, Jeff reverting this, and it's gonna remove the Soul Cursed. So, we're cool with that. Yep. Resolves. Oh, wait, it's a copycat! Never, never thought that was coming. Yep. So, that's something to mention, by the way, Transmogrifade, mm -hmm. always, always, um always turns their copycats into uh or their copycats into copycats sorry that's the word i'm looking for here and jeff why is that why is because that? because it reverts it to its original state first and then when it's a zero cost um it can't turn it into a negative one cost so that type of card doesn't exist oh oh interesting interesting right, but so, the, the number negative one exists right it's just yeah. a negative one card doesn't exist correct yep so we're going to go ahead and diddle our Rylanth here. And then we are going to move two blocks on one of these Empresses. And then we are going to Misery and go to one, hopefully. Well, looks like we're losing this game. <laughs> I, I drew the coin. I was like, I'm pretty sure we're just dead here. Then I transpired through the coin. I was like, oh, oh, this could work out really well. Unfortunately, you cannot spell shield an opposing troop to prevent it from being targeted by your opponent's effects. Yep, yep that looks like... So Jeff has to have, uh, just for those, you know, keeping track, Jeff has to have this misery here, and the amount of arcane zephyrs that we have don't really matter. Oh, yep. uh, All right, so we let that damage happen. We lose our board. Cast this. And I, I really don't know how we win from here, but... I'm gonna go ahead and tra transmog this at end step here. Actually, huh. Am I supposed to transmog this now? I think I'm supposed to wait, actually, because I really don't want to put a spider in my deck before I draw here. Lesson learned. Maybe I was supposed to uh, Zephyr that Empress. Oh, the first transmog? Mm hmm. All right. I, I was not playing around the, mem uh, the misery. That's absolutely the case. Uh, yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and pass to Kent here. Um, during... So during Kent's ready step, I'm going to stop. And the reason why I'm doing this during his ready step is because Kent obviously has cards that allow him to interact with us. And I want him to spend the resources on his turn to do that as opposed to getting it on our turn. And then getting to re-ready on his turn. And I'm going to respond to this with a transmogger fade. And maybe I should have sequenced this in the other order, honestly. Because, like, I would prefer, I guess, neither of them were resolving, so it doesn't really matter. Look you at that definitely flying prefer magistrate. to exile all the other... Yep, so, in the event Kent only has one Zephyr there, I should definitely sequence that in the other order. Can, can we just have, have just, like, a single game end where it's just, like, not this fucking card coming off the top and killing me? Just, like... 
Good old Warpy. Three, three for three. Warp steel shard sword. Just we've we've stabilized. We're not we're not gonna die. Just like warp steel shard sword, ladies and gentlemen. What a messed up uncommon. Ugh. <laughs> um. Pew pew. Like, I could have played around this by leaving the Rhyle in the back, I suppose, but, like, I need to kill Ketter. I guess I could have counted and realized that, like, I have Strangle here, right? Like, yeah, I have Strangle, so I can kill one of these, but then, like, we die to the other one because the Tributal Magistrate lived, so, yeah, I guess, you know, Ketter should have, Ketter should have transmogged, or Zephyr my first you're transmog one, right? there. Oh, I am going to one, you're right. Yeah, you're, you're alive. Oh, oh, I don't know why I thought I was dead. I thought you were dead because you didn't have the removal spell. Oh, I don't know what I had. Oh, you know what? I forgot I gained life last turn from the prince. Mmm, fair I enough. Had it in my, I had it in my head that I was at one, and they were just like, I'm a big dumb stupid. I'm a big dumb stupid. Um, huh. I'm going to cycle this and see what we get. Another resource. All right, well, let's play one of these for now. I think I'm just passing back here. So, Kent's looking for another Warp Steel Shards for in here. Sure. I think he just has to make me have it here. So I'm just I I'm pretty sure I just attack with the warp steel and the depth crawler. Uh, reasoning there is if Jeff has the removal spell, it's going to go towards the prompt regardless. And if right. I well, I mean, actually no, I attack with yeah, everything, right? You should attack with everything, yeah. right? Because this puts yep. me dead through a block. Because even if I take the commander prompt off the table here, I still have mm -hmm. to block the depth crawler. Correct. All right, I still can't eat the tribunal by the tree because I'm at three, right. right? I think we just eat that there yep. and then go to two. Sweet. We're mm. drawing a spider egg. We get to play commander prompt. And that's lethal! We are on the scoreboard! We are on the scoreboard! Borrow Not this fun. commander prompt. Hit you for 11 exaxes. Got in there. All right. Uh, join us for the next post reserves game here, folks. Thanks for watching. Welcome back to game four, folks. Ketter's finally going to get to be on the play after me finally squeaking one out, despite myself. Um, how's your opener look, Ken? I'm going to keep this opener. Uh, while we're not threat dense, we do have some card draw, removal spell, and a focus. It could be anything. Uh, while we're not threat dense on my side either, we're going to kill Ketter's several first plays, so sign me up. Except for that one. I can't kill that one. We'll just start... The long stream of wanting to draw threats, one after another. Can't misery us now, can you? Give me a little tribunal magistrate. Oh no, 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 no. That's exactly what I wanted. Weird. Our deck full of removal spells drew running removal spells. Feeling good. Feeling, feeling good. Hmm. So. Just gonna keep hitting our shard drops and pass the turn. See, get our board into a control deck here. I don't know how that plan's gonna work <laughs> out for it, but uh, we'll see. You know, draw threes for seven resources. Hey, they worked out in that first game, right? Yeah. I think we're just going to continue to hit our shard drops. I, d I don't feel a need to uh, put out our only threat. We have the ability as well to draw uh, an Arcane Zephyr in the next turn or two here before Jeff gets up double removal spell. I guess he could have it now, but it has to be... We are actually hoping to hit some more resources here ourselves. We uh, have just a grip of seven pieces of removal right now, so. 
Huh. So in this situation, I have uh, like Empress plus coin, but uh, we'll just continue to wait. Yeah, like I feel like you're not in a big rush, and like you can generate virtual card advantage by the control deck, like not making all of its resource drops, right? Mm-hmm. Fortunately, you're not cooperating on that axis. Correct. Yeah, like I've successfully hit the for a few times here, so at some point you have to pull the trigger. Yep, these getters. And I am just snapping off removal here on this, just so that way if we do miss drawing a resource next turn, we don't have to discard. And we're going to do something fairly similar. Yeah! Yep. So, worth noting the Saracos coins there, they need a troop in play in order to pass them over like that, so... Huh. Yeah, I'm just going to play this out. If it get, even, if it get, even if this gets transmog, statistically we're still going to have a threat in play, and I just need to start pressuring Kent. We're going to transmog into turn here, because if we get particularly lucky, we have an ability to... So if we draw another... Uh... Worth noting, uh, Kent Shard? sequencing there was a little bit sloppy. You want to make sure that you do transmog at the very end of turn, because oh. if I hit a speed troop, I'd get to attack him there. Correct. All right, so we're going to go... Try to get lucky here. Yep. All right, we do have the rock cast here to punish Kent's line. In response to the copycat targeting that, we can go ahead and rock cast the Tribunal Magistrate, and because the copycat's target will no longer be in play, when the trigger resolves, the copycat will not become the target. I'm gonna run out the other Empress, or the Empress here, and we'll... Exhaust my, brown, my brown fox scout is so sleepy. He's so sleepy. Extra information is not fair. I want some. Huh, that was a good draw. I'll play this Bride of the Damned out here. And then uh, we'll kill... kill Kent. We'll activate my champion power here to make a blood threshold to kill Kent's copycat, which will make me a Bride of the Damned. And then we will rock cast this Empress to give me an Empress. Oh, actually, you know what's technically correct here? I, um, this is a small sequencing mistake, but I, I should have brided my brown fox scout, so that way I have two actual brides and a copycat's the brown fox scout, because in the event of transmogrifating, I'd much rather that, like, now he can transmogrifate this bride and give me a copycat back. Like, exactly like that. Right, and then, Kensiro has fallen here. Hopefully. Hey, you're my hero now. Huh. Wonder if these owls can help me. Wonder if these owls can help me. It's, it's such an awkward card, because, like, all you want to do is draw cards against the control deck, but, like, if you can't keep troops in play, you can't do that. Transmog this so our troops get to ready. Draw some cards, lose some life. So, for everybody on the forums that, uh, you know, is wanting to spend 20 to 30 minutes a day complaining about how Mono Sapphire is just, oh, it's so good and, like, I can't beat it. Stop. You're wrong. <laughs> You're wrong. You're wrong. I will tell you that to your face, in person, over the internet, anywhere and everywhere. You're wrong. Simply put, um, if you interact with the deck before turn four or on that ever critical turn four, you have a lot of opportunity to just cut off what they're doing. I'm going to draw three here because I want to. I'm going to draw three here. We're going to even up the scoreboard here, 2-2. Two, two, and, uh, you know. All right. Join us, for, uh, join us for the next game here in just a second. All right. Welcome to the fifth game another post reserves game here the rubber band game of sorts kent is going to be on the play for this one to take us through your opener 
I, I feel like this is like the super standard medium opener. We've got a cultivator, one transmog, one copycat, and a bunch of shards. We'll hold on to it. Definitely keep a missile on board too. We don't have quite as much removal as I'd like, but we got two quality threats here in the misery, so. I hope from here is we can draw uh, some of our threats like Magistrate or I guess Commander Prompt, but I'd also like to see those arcane zephyrs. Again, never gonna charge with that unless you're in Psychic Ascension mode. Yep, that's a skittery. Uh, if we hit like a rock cast or a strangle here, I think we're gonna kill this. We did not, so we should go ahead and play this uh, Vampire Prince out. There could definitely be an argument to be made to like not having the Psychic Ascension in my deck post board. It's quite possible that just like it, I have enough threats between my brides and my, my vampires. All right, so we get to have a pretty explosive turn here, which is kind of kind of neat. No blocks. Oh, that's cute. You got a consult? Mm-hmm. I'm gonna go ahead and attack with the Vampire Prince here. Um, I gotta decide how I wanna sequence here. We drew the Rock Cast, I think means we just wanna kill this. I guess this is like the critical fourth turn though, right? So I could like hold Rock Cast up to potentially stop a copycat. I like kinda cutting him off with the Skittering Cultivator though because it makes his, um, it makes any other um, consulta talents he has drawn much, much worse. I think I'm just going to be a little bit of aggress aggressive with that. Like, we have the tools in our hand to clean up a lot of other stuff he could play here. Well, unfortunately, we had a nice uh, choice of shard versus shard, so we selected the shard. And... Pass on back. I'm gonna go ahead and start by attacking with the Vampire Prince here, see what we get. So unlucky, still missed. Uh, that being said, we did hit a Transmog there, which is valuable, especially since we're adding a second threat to the board here. We're gonna play out this Blood Shard and pass back Kensway. So we have a couple options here. I think we're gonna go with a copycat on our opponent's vampire princess here. This will give us a blocker of small. Okay, so we got the misery and. What's the question? Is... Oof! It's a good, it's a good hit. This card that is real is good in this matchup. What we refer to as a blowout. So, I mean, I even bored down on the warp steals, like before anyone, you know, gets super caught up in uh, that progression. Hmm. I do not like anything about how this progression is going. But I guess we're just going to hold off a turn. Hmm. Start by cracking Ketter for four here. Hopefully, generate a bloodstone. Rick, Rick, Rick. Oh, so we hit on one. So play the bloodstone out here, which uh, That's deals fine. two to you Ketter. Um, I think I'm just gonna go ahead and pass the turn here. We have pressure on the table, so I think I'd rather wait to do anything else. Mad Robomancer creates an action when it comes into play. Oh, it has a Dreadling gem on it. Sweet, because you swapped out. That's cute. And now Ketter, and whenever Ketter plays an action, he gets to make copies of Mad Robomancer and put them in his hand. Huh. Start by attacking for 
four here if Kent, we know he has at least one hit in his hand this Vampire Princess can take here. That's unfortunate, it's just literally a full piece of removal. It's awkward. Nold an Arcane Zephyr. Huh. Boo! Exactly what I want to do here. Our hope is that Jeff doesn't have the hero fall. Um, you know, as losing other this copies. Might be a little would be bold. Free. I'm hoping to turn that into something with two defense, which we did not. Ha. Huh. I guess I just play this bright out and then play this blood shard and make his heart a two three. Might have been better off just like just playing this and making his other thing a 2-3, but I'm just gonna pass the turn now. This card's being a little bit awkward. And like, so like, Mad Rubber Man is a card, like, people often, you see it played, people are like, oh, that card's bad against Hero Fall, why would you play that? And it's like, well, when your opponent doesn't have Hero Fall, like, it's the type of card that can quickly take over the game. That being said, we do have a pretty high life total right now, so maybe this Vampire Prince can get us there. Well, this attack screams transmogrified, but we're not, like, it's getting transmogrified at some point anyways here. We might be able to trade here on this, and we're blocking the attack at least. Not that that does anything for us. Are there any socket cards in my deck? Zero? I think zero. That's the number, actually. I hope the group of hero fall here and end this Robomancer. No! <laughs> Things are mad! Let's go and attack with this prince. Find me a bloodstone, Princey. Don't do it. Woo. Play another prince out here, and then theoretically have them dead in two if we can uh, hit a bloodstone in the in-between. All right, well, I'll keep this. That's pretty good. This is 5-9 here. We're at a comfortable 36, though, so... Whoa! I control A! 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 Clicking, clicking, clicking! Ah! Kendra's gonna learn how to click at some point. In the meantime, we're I'm gonna, effectively... I'm gonna rebind it to like, like all the other keys. Holy we're, smokes. We're effectively down four points of life. <sighs> Go ahead and attack Kentir for four. Two chances at a bloodstone. Which also gains us more life, which is useful. Alright, so we found one. So play the bloodstone here, which puts Kent to three. And then we'll pass back again, effectively at 33, because Kent missed that damage on the attack there. Yep. Diddle your duder. Diddle the duder. So Kent's still on board, so he needs to he needs to cook something up. We know he has another Robomancer in hand, so he could play that as a last ditch effort to generate something. <laughs> Okay, Kent is still dead on board here. Even if we were down four points of life, he's nowhere near killing us. We'd effectively be at 19 here if Kent had hit us for an extra four. Attack with these vampires. And I think we have Kent covered on every front here. Yeah, so even if this vampire misses here, we have the Necropolis Queen in our hand to kill Kent. So unlucky. Just, just the unluckiest. Hmm. <laughs> Alright, that's gonna finish the post-reserve sweep here for the Blood Sapphire Control deck. Uh, thank you for watching and stay tuned for a wrap-up video here in just a moment, folks. Hello and welcome to the wrap-up segment for today's um, hero battle video. I... That match was fairly close. I think I think that match actually, that set of games, represented like why the Empress deck is good and Correct. why the Blood Sapphire Control deck is good against it. So, like, yep. the first two games were really close, and we had a lot of back and forth, but the Empress deck just being on the axis that's able to attack on can just steal games regardless of if your opponent's deck is good against you. Absolutely. And then when we get to the reserving, um, there's just... It, it, 
when we remember that the game one is this tight exchange back and forth, you have the ability to board in the cards like Arcane Zephyr that kind of lets you steal a game. And, and, you know, I hate to use that term and make people think that it's like a cheap or, you know, like bad way to win the game. Um, we're just saying steal in regards to if the game was, uh, let's say we play this matchup a thousand times. Um, it just feels like the progressions that happen are supposed to favor the hero fall deck, but Arcane Zephyr or the aggressive draws in game ones just kind of help you. Oops. Gotcha. Yeah, and like Zephyr is one of those cards where like on that, like we talked about that pivotal turn four a lot where like Ketter wants to like play his threat and then copycat it once or even twice if he has a bunch of them. And like Arcane Zephyr allows you to fight back on that pivotal turn four with your, um, with your threat basically. So absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, Misery, I can't put into words how good Misery is in this matchup. Just like the yeah. Shard Swarms give these these blood decks such headaches just because of like multiple bodies in one card. And like the fact that Misery can clean those up while also answering a copycat, which is going to be another bomb threat, it's just like super powerful. It's really important to keep in mind that Misery in this, in this deck is a modal spell that has two modes. It's either Fog a Lethal Attack yep. or take two to three troops plus one of them being a pump effect off of the magistrate off the board at the same time um or the third mode which is just counter a copycat like all those modes seem pretty great and sometimes they combine together all for the low low cost of one that's uh, not not easy to play around impossible to play around well, at any rate, if you are looking for something to beat up on the Empress deck, whether you're playing on the ladder or looking for something for the uh, the CCS tournament that's coming up, I think this Blood Sapphire Control deck is uh, a great choice. I'll actually have a full primer on this deck being posted on the main site later this week for the Blood Sapphire Control deck. And then, uh, mm -hmm. Kent, why don't you tell the folks where they can find some more of your stuff? Yeah, absolutely. If you're looking for more content on the Mono Sapphire Empress deck, uh, I've actually got a video going up tomorrow on www.battleshopper. Uh, Oh, today. Oh, it would be today. Whoa, look at that. Um, on battleshopper.com slash news, I will have an Empress series going up there. It plays a slightly different list. We get to show off some stuff like Treacherous Pass, but I definitely recommend you check that out. And additionally, the big news. By the time you see this video, you might not. You might have already missed my introductory stream. I will be streaming every single day in May. Today, we'll be kicking it off with an eight-hour stream starting at about 10.30 Eastern, giving away a couple primal packs, and that'll be going on all day. So if you're watching this video, you get to this point, join me over on the stream and let me know you showed up. I've probably got a booster pack for you. Twitch.tv yeah. forward slash... Kent Ketter. Awesome. Uh, and as always, remember if you enjoyed the videos to uh, like them on YouTube and share them on your social media. If you're interested in supporting my content past that, you can also uh, subscribe on Twitch or become a patron on Patreon for varying amounts. There's information on how to do both of those things uh, down below this video here in the description section. You can also uh, support my content by supporting my sponsor, HexPrimal.com. They would love to sell you some Hex TCG singles. If you use code Jeff5 at checkout, you will save 5% on your order. Also supporting my content here. Thanks for watching, folks. We'll be back on Wednesday with another Hero Battle video.